Hi, Vinyl Community Elliot here, Lazy Dogs Records. And Sam St. John is doing a contest called Now Play. And the, uh, the gist of it is to show the last five or so records you've played, or the last five or so artists uh, whose records you have played. Uh, I want to urge you, I'm going to put a link to uh, Sam's channel uh, in the description here. And uh, if you're not already subscribed to him, I hope you will. He's uh, relatively new to the vinyl community. I thought I would uh, show to enter the contest. I'll show. I've actually got eight albums here. I, I, whenever I've entered all the album into Discogs, I put it in an, uh, an outer sleeve and put a little tag on it identifying the, the record, the, the artist, the label, the year it came out and the condition it's in I, when I play graded and uh, entered into Discogs. And then it goes back up here. So occasionally I'll just go through my my racks of records and if it doesn't have an outer sleeve on it, I know I haven't entered it in Discogs yet. So I'll pull a few records out. Uh, I carried up eight and listened to them, play graded them and got them all in sleeves and entered in Discogs, so I want to show you those eight that I just finished. From my original collection, meaning records I acquired, you know, at the time or around the time they came out, I can always identify them because they have my, I put a little, little sticker here at the bottom with my name on it, uh, on all of those. But the great uh, album you can find it for cheap. I'd urge you to pick it up if you get a chance. Uh, this is just the self-titled Ozark Mountain Daredevils album from 1973. Uh, Glenn Johns produced this album. Generally referred to as the Crazy Quilt album because of the Crazy Quilt on the jacket there. And this is a, this is a fun album. I saw these guys around 1974, about a year after this album came out. Saw them live in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and uh, put on a great show. It was uh, Elvin Bishop, Ozark Mountain Daredevils, and a special guest that nobody knew about and was not announced. Amy Lou Harris came out between sets of, of the Daredevils and Elvin Bishop and, and did an, a, a few acoustic songs. Uh, Standing on the Rock is the one we always loved. I mean, this was an album you put on, you know, somebody put their 8-track in their uh, in their car 8-track when we were partying in the woods when we were in high school. And boy, we would just, uh, we'd all sing along to Standing on the Rock. Uh, it's got uh, Spaceship Orion on here, Chicken Train, Chicken Train, Chicken Train. Uh, if You Want to Get to Heaven, I think that was the single off of this. It got played on the album oriented rock stations. <coughs> A record from Rounder, and again, another one of my original collection from 1980. Vernon Oxford, His and Hers. Now, this is a great country singer. He had some album, one album, I think, with RCA, like at like 68 or 69, put out some singles, got dropped. And then in the mid-70s, he got some... Uh, a resurgence in his career in the UK and um, he put this out like say in 1980 on Rounder uh, a, a honky tonk country singer and I saw a documentary that had him on there he he put out several albums uh, during the 70s and early 80s nothing that really got big or anything but I think like I said a little bit of success in the UK Willie Nelson sings Christofferson. Now think about that. Willie's great voice, unusual, granted, but uh, great, unique, I guess was the word for it, uh, with the songs of Chris Christofferson. And uh, this came out in uh, 1979. From 1975. Old and in the way. This, of course, uh, everybody is, uh, you know, most keen on the fact that this is a Jerry Garcia album. Jerry Garcia plays the banjo and does some of the vocals. 
David Grisman, a uh, great uh, dog artist on the mandolin and vocals, Peter Rowan on guitar and vocals, uh, John Kane uh, on the string bass, and the great, the great Vassar Clemens on the fiddle. Uh, this is a round record, literally round, it's the record label. And the only thing that's recorded in San Francisco, uh, what is it called, the Boarding House, I believe, or something like that, uh, was the name of the club. It was recorded at yeah, the Boarding House, San Francisco, recorded on October 8th, 1973. Osley Stanley and Vicki uh, Babcock were the, uh, did the recording. And uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, hippie bluegrass. I mean, it's straight bluegrass, pretty much. Almost all of it is straight bluegrass. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's the, the long hairs uh, getting into the, into the bluegrass. But it's, it's pretty traditional bluegrass, the way they play it. And uh, so that's, that's a good album. I, I, again, that's one of my original collection. And uh, one I bought in the cutouts, because it's cut out here in the corner. Not much of a cutout. NRBQ at Yankee Stadium. Not really at Yankee Stadium. They recorded it up at Bearsville, which I believe is, is somewhere in upstate New York record, recording studio. I've been a long, long time when I put it on. Very pop. I was surprised. I, I was... Uh, like I said, hadn't played it in a long time. I was expecting it to be more of an R&B sound, but it was a very, very much a kind of a power pop sound, to be honest with you. It was good, good, good sounding album. And who remembers this? Uh, the politically incorrectly named The Nodding Hillbillies from 1990. I believe I probably got this from Columbia House. It's one of my original. Well, I don't think it was my original collection. I think I've got a copy of this up there. I think I got more than one copy, one of which is original collection. And this is the Nodding Hillbillies Missing, presumed having a good time, a vehicle for Mark Knopfler after, I guess it will be after Dire Straits, 1990. So I don't know that Dire Straits was doing anything as a group. I think they had probably broken up several years before that. Uh, but uh, he's the only artist whose name I really know, and I'm sure some of you are watching that and go, are watching this and going and naming the other three guys as being probably great musicians on their own. I mean, if you're going to play with Mark Knopfler, you, you've got to be a good musician. And oh, I didn't realize this was my, my copy is a promotional copy, not for sale. From night, and, and it is part of my original collection from 1981, New Grass Revival Commonwealth. Now this is your your new grass or your progressive bluegrass, if you will. It features uh, uh, not the original lineup, but a long time lineup. Uh, Bella Fleck is not in the group yet. Of course, it's got uh, Sam Bush and it's got uh, Curtis Birch, who's an original member on the uh, guitars, play some dobro and steel guitar on her. Courtney Johnson playing the banjo, original member. John Cowan uh, is it Ebo Walker, I believe, was the bass player uh, originally, and John Cowan who was uh, really not, didn't know much about bluegrass when he joined the band. Had a great he was into rock and R&B has a great voice and he became the lead singer when he joined. Sam Bush said, now I'm the lead singer. And that guy said, okay, when he was auditioning, but can I can I just sing something for you? He said, sure, go ahead. And so he sang something. They played something and he sang on it. And his voice just blow, uh, blew them all away. And Sam Bush, being the smart band leader he was, he said, I used to be the lead singer. Now you're the lead singer. Uh, Cowan's got this big booming voice. Uh, not at all like what you would think. In, in bluegrass and so this is definitely a progressive bluegrass album from 1981 and it's on flying fish I got to go back and change that on discogs to a, a promotional copy okay so those are 
the last eight in this case records. I hope you'll forgive me, Sam, for going over three. But that's the thing about the VC, you know, rules. We don't need no stinking rules, you know. Just kind of go with it. All right. Uh, that, that's what I've been listening to lately. Everybody remember, uh, subscribe to Sam's channel. Do join Sam's. You'll enjoy his, uh, his channel a whole lot, I believe. And remember, everybody, be kind to your neighbor. Because, folks, we're all neighbors. Don't be fussing at each other all the time.